So when we look at the thoracic spine, we have these individual facet joints. We have a facet joint on the bottom of each thoracic vertebrae and a facet joint here on the top. So the facet joints on the top where a thoracic vertebrae will articulate with the bone above and where the thoracic vertebrae will articulate with the bone below. We have the spinous process of each thoracic vertebrae and we have the transverse processes over here. If we think about the individual anatomy of each vertebrae, we have different types of bone that actually make up each vertebrae. During the anterior portion or the body of the vertebrae, we have this cancellous bone which is softer, it's more honeycomb-like. There's going to be a little bit more blood flow here and it's going to help to nourish and protect the discs. In the back, we have this cortical bone which is thicker and stronger and a lot of that comes from, think of the, the concept of Wolf's Law for putting stress and strain through a bone, the body will go ahead and thicken that bone up. So if we have this thick erector spinae group that are pulling through here and gravity coming down and loading the spine, these bones are going to thicken up over time. So we have softer bone in the front and thicker, stronger bone in the back. And in between here, we have our ribs that are wrapping out and around, and then we have synovial fluid and joint capsules and ligaments stacked on top of it. When we're thinking about thoracic mobility, it's not just the flexion and extension and lateral flexion or side bending and rotation of each segment, but it's those segments stacked on top of each other and how they interact with the rib cage. The ribs don't just start in the back, they also run around to the front. And the ribs are going to run into cartilage, they're going to run into the sternum, and they're going to come up all the way to the top. So we have an influence from the anterior body that drives what's happening in the posterior part of the body. Everyone's always thinking thoracic mobility, even locally at the thoracic spine, is driven posteriorly. Not necessarily the case. As the ribs go out and around, we can have dysfunction anteriorly that will drive that posteriorly. So the structure of the thoracic spine, not just the individual bone and what it protects and what it does, but it's the articulations with the ribs around that and the slightly different jobs that the thoracic spine has when compared to the lumbar and cervical as well.